Dear friends, I'm Father Thomas Duffner, and I'd like to ask you a question. It has to do with happiness. Our world has set aside all of its rules. It set aside all of its boundaries. We say that we're utterly free. We claim freedoms from everything, from every restriction. We have unlimited pleasures, and we ask the question, are you happy? Has it made you happy? We follow all of our desires, all of our yearnings, and has it made us happy? I think sometimes even our pleasures are empty. Even our successes can be meaningless. Is that really what we want? I think underneath it, there's a fear, a concern, a, a fear of rejection, a fear of loneliness that's led us to be a, afraid of commitments. The very commitments that could have satisfied, could have built us up, could have led to a happiness, could have led to great, great accomplishments. And yet we draw back from them because of fear, fear of failure, and, and so we're in paralysis. Let me offer you a different direction. Let me offer you a different consideration. It's that person, that divine person, the church has presented to us all along. What if Jesus Christ has the answer for you? What if he opens up a door for you for success, for happiness, for fulfillment, not just in, in keeping rules, but in actually flourishing? Remember, the great saints have told us, St. Irenaeus, he says, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. God wants our flourishing. This isn't about just following rules. This is a relationship with someone who loves us, who wants our happiness more than we could even want it ourselves. Let me share with you a passage. It comes to us from Colossians, starting in verse 15. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or powers. We believe that Jesus Christ is God's Son and our Savior. That he's not just a really swell guy, not even just a miracle worker. He's God's Son. He's our Savior. When we come to know him, when we come to know what he's done for us, when we realize that he's the author of all that is, all of creation, he understands he created it. In the divine intellect that he possesses, he knows all things. This is Jesus, the same one who came into this world, the same one who comes to love us, to save us, to redeem us. Going on in the passage, Jesus is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. What they're saying here is that Jesus Christ is founder of the church, the head of the church, the mystical body. But you and I, by baptism, become members of that body, sharers in the divine life. He's the head of the body. We're the members. He's the creator of all things. We're the recipients of that share in the divine life, made sons and daughters of God. And therefore, we have a destiny in the heavens, a destiny even beyond this world. But we also have a claim in the divine friendship, in our own relationship as sons and daughters. We have a claim upon God's goodness, his grace, his mercy, and his divine help. We have purpose, and purpose makes us contented gives us hope, leads us down a path that is pleasing to him. It goes on to say, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself in all things, whether on earth or in the heavens, making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the acknowledgement that Jesus came as Savior. His very name means God saves, and he came to save us, you and me, from our sins. And the very mission that he sent the apostles on was to preach not love, not faith, but repentance. To repent of our sins. To acknowledge our sins in God's hands and ask for his mercy. That's the first step. To acknowledge him as Savior. John the Baptist came in that same vein, preaching repentance. And the people, knowing that they had sinned, knowing that they had fallen short, repented. And now they were ready to meet Jesus as Savior. That's why we open our hearts first by repentance. The next thing I want you to do is I actually want you to ask Jesus for something that you want, that only you know, that something is very near and dear to your heart. I want you to ask him, repent of your sins, tell him, Lord, I know that I've sinned. I know that I've fallen short. Have mercy on me, a sinner. And then say, I want you to help me with this. Whatever this thing is for you, I want your help. I beg for your help. And when God answers your prayers, when he does this thing for you that, that only you know, you know that he doesn't just love everybody. You can say, he loves me. This is the beginning of a relationship. He invites this. He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. That's what I want you to do. First repent and then ask for something that you want. 
And the third piece that comes out of this, it goes even further because you and I are now members of his body. We're now sent on mission. And that mission means that we're called to unite ourselves to him, to offer ourselves in sacrifice together with him to the Heavenly Father. St. Paul's going to go on to say here, I make up in my body the sacrifices that are lacking in Christ. What could be lacking in God's own Son? Except that he made us his members. Now our sacrifice has value. Your sufferings, your hardship, loneliness, all the troubles of your life now have meaning. Offered together with Christ to the Father, have purpose and draw down divine grace on yourself and on others. All this means that you're part of a body, a group, a membership in the church, which is his mystical body. It means you have a destiny even beyond this world and a claim upon his grace even now. All of this means that following his plan, loneliness begins to evaporate. Mission begins to appear. Purpose begins to be found in our lives. Happiness begins to rise up because you know that you're loved, that you have a place in God's family, that you have a mission here to accomplish, which will bring great satisfaction to you and great glory in the kingdom of heaven. This is what I want you to consider today. Jesus Christ is the very center of our happiness.